again for Create a Smile Stamps, and today we're going to be creating this card that shows an effective use of white space. To create this card, I'm using the Botanical Love Stamp Set, which is a very much love stamp set of mine from Create a Smile. I've used it a ton of times. I can't even tell you how many times. And I am going to be inking this up using um, so just some black ink. You can really use any color, and I'm stamping on some masking paper. I'm going to stamp this four times and cut them all out by hand. If you have a scan and cut machine or anything like that, this is going to save you a lot of time. So after I finish cutting out all of those flowers, I'm going to start stamping. I'm just simply taking a panel that measures four by five and a quarter, and I am laying down my botanical love uh, little flower there. I'm just inking it up using some black uh, VersaFine ink, and I'm going to ink it in a random background powder pattern all over the back of this. And this is going to be my space for white space. Now, what you want to do is to stamp three flower the flower three times and then two times sort of off of the page or slightly off of the page and then you'll have enough masks with the four flowers that you've already cut out using masking paper. For time purposes I'm just going to speed you up as I do this. I'm just making sure I clean off my area um, if I get a lot of ink on it um, on the actual see itself and then I'm just going to go in and keep stamping it. I'm stamping it three times and you can see it doesn't really matter that I stamp only partially when I lay it down because the see stamps in the same place every single time. So it's very useful. And because this stamp is so old at this point and been used so many times, I don't exactly trust it to um, stick as well as it should. Um, so I find the Missy tool just a relief as far as what I'm doing and making sure that everything works out well. Alright, so now I just need to remove all of my masking paper. So these are the flowers we cut out at the beginning of the video. And I'm going to um, take off the back of the masking paper and stick them on over top of my flowers to create a mask for when I'm um, using the Distress inks to make my background. So you just need to figure out which way the flower goes and then just add the masking tool. The fourth flower that I had made, so I cut out three full ones, and the fourth one I simply cut in half so I could use it twice. And um, it just made things a lot easier uh, instead of having to cut out, you know, six of these in total or five. Um, I was able to just cut out four, cut one in half, and use it as a partial mask. I'm going to use a couple of different colors here for the background. I'm using Peacock Feathers, Broken China, a Salty Ocean, and Tumbled Glass. I decided against using the Mermaid Lagoon, which I had originally planned on using on the edges, but I decided that it was actually dark enough and I wanted to keep the color quite nice and colorful. So I'm starting with the tumbled glass ink and I start on the mask and work my way out towards the paper and I wanted to cover my entire card in the tumbled glass, the lightest color, because I wanted to make it sort of darker around the edges and it lighten up towards the middle of the card. So I'm just going in with a light hand in a circular motion. I'm putting next to no pressure on the actual blending tool itself. That's how you get a smooth blend without getting any harsh lines. Don't put any pressure on the brush, add a circular motion, and don't go directly to the paper after inking up your tool. Go onto the masking paper and then work your way into the paper. So I'm going now with my darker color, which is Broken China, and I'm going pretty much on the flowers and making sure that there's a shadow underneath the flower. Then I'm going in with the Peacock Feathers, which is a very much more vibrant color. And I'm just going along the edges and then into the actual flowered area, keeping that middle part fairly light. And lastly, the Salty Ocean, and I'm just adding bits and pieces here and there to this color. Not adding too much because I still want it to be a teal look, not so much a blue look. And what I did next was I just grabbed some water on my hand and flicked it onto the card. You can see the ink start to repel it right away, and I get these really nice water spots onto the card. Um, again, I just added a couple of droplets of water to my fingertips and let them fall onto the paper. And next, I just needed to remove all of the masking paper, which is usually the funnest part about doing a masking card. The masking paper did get a little bit wet when I was um, adding the water to the card, so it made it a little bit harder to take off, but overall it was still fine. It was just made the fact that I can't reuse these masks because they had torn in some areas because they were wet. So if you want to do this, um, I would suggest maybe using an archival black ink. That way it's waterproof and you can remove the mask and then add the water and it shouldn't be much of an issue. I just needed to create my sentiment now so I grabbed a scrap piece of black paper. I wanted to use the thanks stamp from Create a Smile Stamps and this is the one from the Time to Say Thanks stamp set. And I'm just going to stamp it in Versamark ink and emboss it in white embossing powder. 
The embossing powder I'm using is Ranger Super Fine Embossing Powder and I'm just going to melt this with my heat tool and then cut it out so that it's a nice rectangle and it's the exact shape of the sentiment itself. I absolutely love stamping um, with Versamark and then embossing my sentiments on black ink, I think, or on black paper. I think it's a super effective look and it looks much better than white pigment ink. So I'm just going to add my sentiment to my actual card itself using some 3D foam tape. Add that to the corner here, nice and subtly. And then I debated about what kind of card base I'm going to put this panel on. Am I going to put it on a white or a black card base? So what I like to do is kind of have a white and black card bases on hand. And I put it on the white to see how that would look. And then I put it on the black to see how that would look. And both of them look completely fine and coordinate well. But I thought that the white made it a lot more vibrant and personally a lot brighter and more happy card in my opinion. Um, I think I would use black if I was going for a very effective, bold look, but that's not what I was going for in this card. So I just added it to a white card base that measures 11 by 4 and a quarter inches, folded in half at 5 and a half, and that's the end of today's card. So here are a couple close-up pictures of the actual card itself. I absolutely love the way that it turned out, and that effective white space is amazing. All of the supplies used are linked to below in the video description or on my blog. Here you can access my blog by clicking up at the top of the screen. You can check out my last video on how to make gold paper by clicking on the moving video, or you can click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll catch you next week for another video.